Hi everyone. Welcome to A Work in Progress. I'm Joanne. In today's video, I thought it would be fun to take you along with me while I go thrifting at the Durham Rescue Mission Outlet. Uh, this is very similar to the Goodwill Outlets with two big exceptions. First, they're outside underneath a very large tent. And the second is that it's much smaller than most of the Goodwill outlets that I have been to. But nonetheless, it's still a lot of fun. And I would be very curious to know if you saw anything in the bins that you would have picked up. Uh, let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. So let's go ahead. Let's get started thrifting. And then I will meet you back here and I'll show you all the goodies that I found. I hope you enjoy. So here we are. This kind of just gives you an idea of their hours and their requirements and such. You can see here they have these very large blue bins that you put your items into and just kind of trail them around with you as you go through the outlet. They do have shopping carts as you can see there's a red one right there but they are very few and far between. There's the cost of the goods, $1.49 for hard goods. I'm sorry, 59 cents for hard goods and $1.49 for clothing. I thought this was a really cute little basket. This was a ceramic house. They may have been put out by Target the last couple of years. I'm not sure. I do remember them being very popular at one point. I didn't pick it up though because as you saw, it did have a nick in it. I ended up putting those baskets in my blue bin. This has been here for the last couple of weeks. That was a cute little plate by Hallmark. to the next one. That was a pretty picture. I think if there had been another one, I might have considered getting a pair and selling them on Facebook Marketplace, but I couldn't find a second one. I just had to put that little one in my in my bin. As you can see, I came across a whole lot of these little figurines. I did put them in my basket to begin with, but then later on, when I emptied out my basket to make sure that I wanted, truly wanted everything that I got, I ended up putting them back. What do you think? Should I have kept them?
This is really pretty. I liked this piece. At this point, my cart's looking a little empty. I'm wondering now if maybe I should have picked up these two baskets. As you can see, I did pick up this little kitty cat, but then later going through things, I decided to put him back. You just never know what you're going to find here in these bins. This is a nice piece and I did end up getting that. Stay tuned to the haul portion of this video to hear what I plan on doing with it. As you can see, they had a lot of baskets the day that I was at the outlet. I thought this was really pretty and I did consider picking it up, except the cap was missing. Despite that, I'm kind of sorry that I didn't get it now. Do you think I should have picked up this mug? This is another piece too that I initially picked up and put in my basket and later ended up putting back. It was rather heavy and it was missing the cord.
That poor little pug had seen better days. This is another piece that I initially put in my cart and then after second thought I ended up putting him back. Am I the only one that has one of these back home? I used to use it a lot when I entertained at home. I didn't get this Bombay frame and I'm actually glad that I didn't because as I was getting ready to leave, another woman picked it up and was so excited that she found it and it was new in the package from Bombay. So it was meant for her to get. Well, that wraps up the thrift with me portion of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Now let's see what I took home. Well, that is just a taste of what you could find at the outlets here in Durham. I'm gonna go ahead and get started showing you what I found. Most of what I got is going to be for resale either through my live sales, uh, direct sales straight here on YouTube, or I would put them in my antique space. The items that I'll be keeping for myself, I'm going to go ahead and let you know what those are. So if you happen to see anything that you're interested in, go ahead and shoot me an email. And that address will be in the description box for this video. I'll start with the first two kind of boring items. I decided to make a few more of the sweater pumpkins and the reason I did it is because of the two sweaters that I found there. I got this brown cable knit sweater so that's going to make some really pretty pumpkins I think and they are going to coordinate with this yellow ribbed sweater. So I think the two of them together are going to like make some very nice looking pumpkins. Um, oh, and they, I, I was charged, it was somewhere between $16 and $17 for everything that I'm about to show you now. That takes care of the clothing. This piece I think I'm going to put up in my uh, antique space. It is not antique, but you can put things that are not antiques there. And it's this adorable little ceramic biscuit container. It has a nice wood top on it with a good seal to it. It's really clean inside. And let's see, it was made in Thailand, so it actually might have a, I don't know, I don't know, it might have some age to it. I'm not 100% sure, very honest with you. But I thought somebody would enjoy that. This is not my style at all. I know it's going to be someone's style, and it is just beautiful. And it's this plate, a tray. Oops, sorry about that glare there. But look at the graphics on there. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. It is from Noritake, made in Japan. There's the back. And then you may also notice right over here, there's a chip, which to be honest with you, I hadn't noticed until after I had brought it home. Regardless, though, I would have picked it up because I think it's just a beautiful print on the front. So we'll be reselling that. I uh, got this little guy. I think I might keep him for myself. I'm not 100% sure yet. But it's just this adorable little lamb. I mean, look at the face on him. I thought he was so, so cute. Very well done. I doubt that this has any age to it. There are no markings on it whatsoever. But I thought it was really cute. I was hoping to find some more of them in the bins while I was there. And who knows? I may in subsequent trips. But I did pick him up for now. This, I couldn't, be, I couldn't believe somebody hadn't snatched this up ahead of me. But I'm glad they didn't. And it is this flower sifter. Isn't this just the coolest thing? So apparently it either mounts on a wall or mounts um, underneath, like in uh, one of those old, oh my gosh, the racks that, that had the flower sifter in them and, and the bread box and all. 
for the life of me now, I cannot re recall what they were called. And somewhere, oh, here we are. There's a tag on the bottom. It says, antique flower sif sifter, mounting tracks inside. And I did open it up, and the mounting tracks are in there. So I was really excited to find this. The first time I've ever found one. And this is probably going to go into my antique space. And I am thinking I'm going to price this at about $20 in that space, and we'll see how it does. Set that little one down. Uh, I found another of those coasters. Uh, the Pimpernel, if that's how you pronounce it, six traditional coasters. I found some of them a while back. We're not in the box. These are in pristine condition. There's not a thing wrong with these. And let me see if these are, oh, they're all different. I won't show you all of them, but they do have different pictures on all of them. Perfect, perfect condition. Uh, looks like they are made in England. And that's what the tag looks on the back of it. And the box is even in perfect condition. And let me see if it says anything else. United Kingdom, Kingdom. I do not see a date on these. They must be called Hunting Red, I'm guess, guessing. But I was pretty excited to find those. Uh, these are definitely going to be going up in the booth, uh, unless they go on a direct sale. Some more Starbucks mugs. I just have, you know, I'm addicted to it. I can't help it. I've tried, but if they're in good condition, I pick them up. Um, I have rearranged things in my booth this past weekend with the help of my daughter, and I will have to give you a tour uh, now that I have figured out on my phone how I can mute out completely the background noise and then do a voiceover on it. I'll have to give you a nicer tour of the booth, and you can let me know how, how it looks. But anyway, that is down the line. I picked up this little, I'm going to call it a little apple basket, and for right now, I'm going to leave the lining in it. Oh, this was hand done. This lining was hand done in it. I don't do not believe that that is store bought. So I thought that was really cute, especially for the fall now. That might appeal to someone. Uh, this I picked up. Let me cut this off here. And I picked this up. Ah, there we go. Primarily because of the sleigh. I thought it was really cute. And then inside of it, oops. It's got some vintage plastic greenery. It looks like it was for a candle. And these little pine cones on here are flocked. So that's pretty cool. Let me see if there are markings. There's no kind of marking. It looks like there was a tag on the bottom of it at one time. But I thought that was kind of cute and might go for someone's decor. Uh, I found four of these uh, teak salad bowls. And I have some more to show you as soon as I get them out of the bag. Uh, but I figured I would go ahead and pick these up. Uh, these do not have a bowl with them. The other ones that I picked up do. But there might be a chance that somebody would be looking for just some teak salad bowls. Found an individual little cream. Well, I don't know if this is an individual creamer, actually, because it's a little bit, I think, taller or bigger than an individual would be. But it's a nice little creamer. This is a like a really deep navy going into a tealy blue it's dirty on the bottom okay it's from epic uh, made in korea you can see the bottom there now all around here it's in perfect condition i don't oh no chips on the bottom either so that's in really good condition uh, this was kind of wound up and uh, with the packing tape around it and I unwound it, and I'm really glad that I did because it's a wall hanging. Look at the, uh, I'm going to say these are maybe Orioles, and then the Cardinal, and look at that going down. Isn't that pretty? I thought this was really, really pretty. And turns out this came from the, um, the NC State Fair, which sadly, because of the pandemic, is not going to be happening this year. I don't know if it's ever happened before that it has, it has not occurred. It's usually in October of every year, but not this year. Uh, let me see here what it says about it. Looks like it was made in the United States. It's a called Feathers, I'm um, sorry, Birds of a Feather Bell Pull is what it's called. 
but I thought that was really, really pretty and very well done. So I think somebody would be happy to get that. Uh, don't forget as well to leave a comment down below, not only of the things that you may have seen in the shop along that you would have picked up, but also let me know what your favorite thing was, what your favorite find was from the things that I'm showing you now that I picked up. And I'll tell you my favorite at the end of the video. This is, a, this is an individual creamer because that is small enough. Now that's very interesting, the SD with the cross on it, I don't know what that is. Uh, this is Johnson China um, Falls Creek PA, I believe is what that says on the bottom. It doesn't want to, there we go, focus. But really pretty coloring on this. And then this I picked up, this one is for myself, because this will go with the kind of rustic feel that I'm going to be having for my Christmas tree this year, one of my trees anyway. I'm going to try and take off the 2019, but it's a piece of wood, as you can see, and then it's written in home. I thought that was really pretty. I just noticed now it's missing a little bit of the bark there, but that's okay. That is not a big deal. I have enough trees around my house that if I really want to, I can go find a piece of bark and just hot glue it on there and all will be well. This, I believe, is going to go up into the booth. I could not find the lid, sadly. Uh, this is... Lar Lorenzini and DC Lorenzini and Serrano Milano. I love this tin. I love the graphics on it, the color on it. Here's what the bottom looks like. Uh, let's see. Actually, the tin looks like this may have been in the United, made in the United States. But I thought this would be the perfect planter. Um, and this would be great even for a real plant. Have you got the right size pot, popped it in there. Even if you had drainage, you're good to go because it's in this tin here. I, I really loved it. I thought this would make a great planter in someone's kitchen. Okay. Oh, I'll show you these next. I'm going in now into the bag that I have, my Ikea bag. These are Two trays, they are identical, so I will just show you one. These I picked up almost on my way out. And they're kind of a plastic material. They do need to be cleaned up, but these were made in Italy. I don't know if that's going to... There you go. See, sometimes the glare is actually helpful. So these were made in Italy. I thought they were really, really pretty trays, two of them. These next pieces that I'm going to show you, hold on just a sec. There we go. I had to move things. I didn't want them to fall. These are not new, but it's a set of three baskets, and they look like little drums. They nest inside of each other, but I thought these would be great up in my antique space, uh, you know, coming up on the holidays and such. Even though they are not new, I think that these will appeal to someone. And since, you know, I only paid $16, $17 for everything I'm showing you, even if I price these at, I don't know, say $12 or $15, that still will recoup most of what I spent for this haul. So there'll be a booth item, I believe. And then this, I couldn't leave this behind. I'm not sure, honestly, if this is a little planter or if it's for toothpicks. There is the inside of it. Maybe you guys can give me your thoughts on it, whether this is a planter or for toothpicks, but it's so adorable. And this was made in occupied Japan there on the bottom. Now there is a little, oh yes, on the other underside. On, can you see? There you go. I think you can make it out because it's a lot whiter on the underside of his tail is little teeny tiny chip. But when he's sitting like that and you're looking straight onto him, you cannot see it at all. Needs a little bit of cleanup, but I thought this was adorable. Uh, let me see here. I think you saw this in the shop along. It's a trivet ceramic. I thought the graphics again on this were really, really pretty. It can even go on the wall. It does not have to sit on your countertop. And it looks like originally it was $9.50 from David's, Davidson Sons 
gifts in Indianapolis. But I thought that was pretty. And then with a, a little bit of old English on here, just to kind of bring this wood back to life, it's going to look even better, I think. Let me see. Oh, let me show you this piece next. And I apologize that I keep dipping down here, but the rest of my stuff is in a bag that's next to me. This is not a new piece, but I think what I'm going to do with this is the same thing that I am in the process of doing with the key that I showed you in a previous video. That I am going to, I am painting this white and then I will distress it because once that's done, all of these, uh, these areas that are higher. Once they're distressed and then there's the white deep inside, I think that the areas are going to pop and it's going to look really pretty. I'll show this to you when it is all finished. All right. Um, this I was a little iffy on. Some of you may remember these. I mean, I think back in the day, these things were very, very popular. And if I remember correctly, what you may have done with them was folded up your hand towels and your hand towels sat on top of these in your bathroom. But the good thing about this is that if you're not crazy about this green color, it can always be spray painted. So I'm not sure if I'll spray paint it before I sell it or not, or just sell it, you know, try and sell it in the green. If it doesn't move, then I, I may consider spray painting it. And it does have a couple little marks right here and here. But those were made in manufacturing. Uh, it looks as though the glaze did not hit those areas uh, when they were glazing it. And this was made in Taiwan something, bath something. Can't me cannot make that out. The tag is pretty well worn. But I thought I would give it a try and see what happens. Uh, let me see. I found some adorable... I think adorable uh, salt and pepper shakers. Let me cut them loose because you can see they are all taped up here, which is good. And this is actually more of like a <clears throat> like a saran wrap that they used to, to wrap these up so they didn't get lost from one another in the bins. Now these are not old; they are made in China, but I don't care because it's the Mr. and Mrs. Little Piggies here. They're so adorable. I think they are just so darn cute. They both have their stoppers, and I think somebody is going to love these. Um, da -da. Some more piggy salt and, pe salt and pepper shakers. Let me cut these two loose. I may even, if I'm able to get enough uh, salt and pepper shakers, I may just do a whole shelf in my booth, because I have noticed that other people that have booths a lot of them do have um, like all of the pepper shake, salt and pepper shakers kind of together, corralled together. So these are two more little piggies, cute as bug's ears as they can be, um, made in China. Both have their stoppers. Absolutely adorable, I think. Okay, I'm again starting to run out of room here. Uh, Some more piggies. Hold on. These started to unwrap as I was taking them out of the bag. So let me... Now these have some age to them, so that's good. So we have these two little piggies, and they do show some crazing. There is the back of them. And here is their sticker. Uh, made in Taiwan. Let me put this little guy down. Republic of China. ROC, if you can make that out. So they're, they're cuties. Oh, this little piggy has a little teeny tiny chip on his ear, which I did not notice when I purchased him. Would have I would have gotten him anyway, though. And this one has, I am talking about the, the fleeest flea bite ever. Teeny, teeny, tiny little flea nick there. So those are adorable, too. Uh, let me see. One more set of shakers and then a pepper. I know they have salt cellars. Do they have pepper cellars? I'll show you this in just a sec. Somebody must have given up their piggy salt and pepper shaker collection, I think. Look at these two. Just adorable. This one is lying down, taking a nap, and this one isn't even going to bother to lay down and take a nap. She's just going to take a nap just sitting up. Um, both made in China. But another cute little set there. And then this, this is what I was asking, 
are their pepper sellers. Let me show this to you, unwrap it first. Because, sorry, I keep looking up. I get, sometimes get so easily distracted. I'm actually in my laundry room. You can tell I'm not in my kitchen tonight. And I'm right in front of a window so I can get some natural light. And the cars keep going by and they keep catching my eye. So I apologize for that. So here it is with the little bird on it. I think it's so pretty. I tried to find a salt one. And this too, like that little lamb, who knows? Maybe my next trip there, I'll find the salt that matches this. But the pepper is so pretty. It is in really good condition. Um, oh, it has... No, I say that and then I see this nick right here, right there. You can see it, even if the camera is not focusing, you can still see that little nick on the bottom there. Um, let me see, where was this made? Made in, oh, Denmark, I think that says. I believe that says made in Denmark. Come on, focus, there we go. So, so pretty. I mean, even if you didn't use this for pepper, I think that's just a really pretty decor piece. Um, then we have a keep calm and carry on mug. Somebody is going to like that. I think that is from wild and wolf made in Thailand. A few more things to show you. And I know this was a long video, longer than usual. Got a couple of music boxes. Look at how pretty that is. And it is decorated all the way around. So, so pretty. This is, let's see here. Crafted in Japan, I believe is what it says. It is Melodies of Christmas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Silent Night 1987 Heritage House. I'm not going to wind it up for you, but it does work. I tried it before I, I took it out of the, the bin. I mean, the and the velvet on here is really clean, which kind of surprises me. It does have to be cleaned up a little bit on the inside, but it's in beautiful working condition and absolutely gorgeous, I think. Um, let's see here. Found one more. And this also has kind of a, I guess it's a Christmassy scene on it. This one is an oval one. And again, the decorations all around it. And this is... Melodies of Christmas, Oh Come All You Faithful, from 1991, Heritage House. Looks like they are both fine porcelain. And here's the interior of this one. This just needs a little bit of cleanup, uh, kind of more like a dusting on that red velvet, and it's good to go. I was happy to find those. I think they're really pretty. Then the last thing that I have to show you is, I think, let me make sure nothing is hiding in here. So this is a set, and then we have the large teak salad bowl. This is Genuine Teak Thailand. And then this one has the four plates, or four bowls that go with it. I picked this up, and it, although it is rather heavy, I picked it up because I had a similar one um, in my booth not too long ago that sold. I wish I could remember how much it sold for. I'm probably going to price that at around... Somewhere between $20 and $25, it depends, because I'm doing a 20% 20, 20 off sale right now. So, you know, you got to kind of figure in that 20% off as to what your final um, cost is going to be. So that's everything. Thanks for sticking it out with me. I know this was a long one. My favorite piece. My favorite piece, I think, is going to be this flower sifter. Ah, pick it up. I'm dropping it because I've never found one before. So this was a first for me. I love firsts and this has got some age to it. And I think that's gonna be a really fun find for somebody in my booth. So if you would, let me set this down, in the comment section down below, ooh, there we go. Um, let everyone know what your favorite find was from this week's video. Um, I will be having Another live sale tomorrow night here on my channel at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe I have about 30, 31 items to share with you. And I think my friend Rhonda will be joining us. So I hope you can make it as well. So as, of, as always, everyone, please take very good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I hope to see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, right back here at Eastern Standard Time. Bye for now.